Like, yeah, the, yeah. Let's find out who you really are. It's capitalism. So, um, yeah, uh, we are in an interesting time period. Uh, transphobes are getting clowned on in lots of ways, and we'll probably talk about all these segments through over the course of the next several streams. But everything from conservatives getting sick of the concept of wokeness to trans rights being overall, you know, supported by uh, the majority of people in the country, the bizarre obsession the, uh, the right has with uh, Dylan Mulvaney. So I'll be really upfront. We didn't know who the hell this was. This is quite the headline too of an article yeah so let's get into this because this apparently is funny because apparently no one watched h bomber guys woke brands video bud light sent a handful of beers to a trans influencer and all hell broke loose all right let's go in early april bud light sent an influencer named dylan mulvaney a handful of beers mulvaney in turn posted a video of herself dressed like holly golightly from breakfast at tiffany's based using said beers to celebrate both march madness and her first year of womanhood one of the cans featured her image. It was part of a paid sponsorship deal and promotion for some sort of sweepstakes challenge where people can win $15,000 from Bud Light by sending in videos of themselves carrying a lot of beer. This made some people very mad. <laughs> and not because Holly Golightly wasn't uh, really a beer gal. Her preference was, was, was the White Angel, boozy mix of vodka and gin, which, woo. Instead, they were upset because Mulvaney is transgender. Of course they were. Trans issues are currently front and center in America's culture war. Anti-trans sentiment is sweeping many corners of the right, targeting children, drag shows, driver's licenses, health care, among other areas, in showing up in conservative media and conservative legislation, and even working itself into the mainstream. Now, Bud Light has found itself in the eye of the anti-trans storm. <laughs> Kid Rock is shooting cans of the beer. Grandpa's feeling a little frisky today. And Travis Tritt says he's banning the brand from his tour. Many of the right are calling for boycotts, uh, boycotts of the best selling beer in the country. If this all sounds ludicrous, it's because it kind of is. It's also indicative of where we are in the United States today. How big of a deal is this for Bud Light? The answer is probably not very. Don, a liquor store owner in Arkansas who requested to remain anonymous so he doesn't get caught up in the wokeness, told me he's seen a 20 to 25 percent dip in Bud Light sales since the controversy hit with his admittedly small sample size of shoppers seemingly off for Miller Lite and Coors Light instead. However, he doesn't expect, expect the backlash to stick. A lot of people are talking about it, fired up about it. They're never drinking Bud Light again, yada, yada, yada. But they'll be drinking them in a month as soon as the news cycle quits, he said. In terms of hurting sales, boycotts tend not to be super effective, as most people don't respond, let alone stick to them. Remember the great Keurig boycott of 2017 or free to lay in 2021? Or more recently, when people were mad because M&Ms were girls? The green M&M, you will notice, is no longer wearing sexy boots. Plus, if Bud Light's doing a campaign like this, it probably thinks it will help sales with some segment of consumer. Bigger picture, Bud Light's parent company, Anheuser-Busch InBev, has tons of brands under its umbrella and is worth over $100 billion. Its stock price hasn't really moved on the matter. It's up a, by about 7% over the last month, though in the past few days, it's come down some from recent highs. They're just far more diversified and globalized than this market and this one brand. And bringing a substantial, sustained boycott against them to pressure them into walking back on their support for trans people, or however you interpret this campaign, it would require just an enormous amount of coordination and discipline that, frankly, the right wing of this country just doesn't really display for stuff like this, said Dave Infante, a beer columnist for Vine Pair and the publisher of Drinks Newsletter Fingers. There will be some wobbles here and there, but in terms of the company's overall orientation and what it's driving at, if they walk this back, it's because they lost nerve, not because they lost sales. Once we get to this in a second, I want to point this up. This has been amazing because here's the thing I, I want to point out, and we've discussed this ad nauseum before, but like I need people to understand there is a very real way that these types of boycotts do not work. Liberal, not liberal versus conservative, but liberal boycotts do not work. And the idea that you can in any way, shape or form change the way these corporations think or behave 
We saw this with Keurig when Keurig did its big uh, pull away from Hannity. Uh, we saw this with Nike when everybody got mad because Colin Kaepernick was the face of mm-hmm. Nike. On the left, we saw this with Hogwarts Legacy. This was our argument previously about Jesse Gender and her dumbass boycott. Basically, the idea is that by instituting these things, you are actually in the modern market acting as a form of advertisement. Yep, brings so much attention and you keep bringing up the name, keep bringing up thoughts, keep bringing into people's attention, awareness, all of that. And sure enough, it sticks. And people, more and more people go, oh, I'll get the coffee machine that I've been hearing about this whole time. Even if like the news is negative about it, right? People are saying, oh, there's something bad here. That doesn't seem to stick as well as just the sheer amount of advertising that comes with it. It's such a tremendous misunderstanding of how markets function as well as how these types of situations work. And so like, One of the things that's really important is to understand when people do this stuff, this performative nonsense, like think about this. So you have a bunch of Bud Light in your fridge and you as a conservative are mad about the wokeness and all these men in dresses. And so what you do is you grab all that beer that you paid for that Anheuser-Busch doesn't give a f*** about now and then proceeds to toss all that in the garbage or go shoot it in the backyard. Why do they care? You're You're out of beer now and you still need more beer. Yeah, you you had to destroy your beer. You're out of beer. You already paid for And then you then proceed to like go through and basically like wait it out, buy another beer you might like less. Then eventually it breaks down and you do the thing and you start buying Bud Light again. Once people are creatures of habit too. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, This is silly nonsense. Yeah, this is silly nonsense. So let's let's go over here. The Bud Lash explained. So on April 1st, Mulvaney 26 posted the video in question with the Bud Light cans and the sponsorship. For a company with as big an ad budget as Budweiser, these types of partnerships with influencers are pretty small potatoes. That's not to say that Mulvaney's reach isn't big. She's got 1.8 million followers on Insta and 10.8 million uh, followers on TikTok and has deals, some now controversial, with multiple brands. But her reach isn't Super Bowl ad big. The post started to pick up steam in conservative circles relatively quickly. Right-wing commentator Ben Shapiro decried the collaboration on his show, saying, well, folks, Our culture has now decided men are women and women are men and you must be forced to consume products that they say so. Shapiro appeared not to be much of a Bud Light fan himself, so he'll probably doesn't have have much to boycott. I understand Bud Light is water masquerading as beer, he said, so I guess that, you know, is sort of a trans beer. Cope. Oh my God, the copium. Ben Shapiro is so mad that we actually are acknowledging Dylan's gender. Oh, it's so good. I love seeing him suffer. Uh, Oh, that's sweet, sweet copium. 90s rocker Kid Rock. I think I have a meme around here where it says he's Kid oh. Effer something. Yeah, uh, no. Can't show that on stream, but that one's pretty funny. Kid Rock. He had one good song and he can be in a fire and roadblocks. 90s rocker Kid Rock posted a video of himself shooting a few cases of Bud Light, which he presumably paid for. <laughs> Bud Light, Anheuser Busch, he said, have a terrific day. Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene, re- uh, rep- uh, Republican from Georgia, put up a photo of Coors Light case in her back of her vehicle on Twitter. The accompanying caption reading, I would have bought the King of Beers, but it's changed its gender to the Queen of Beers. That's really the best she had? It was the best she- Okay. And you gotta be sexist too? All right. Have fun with that. Right. Marjorie Taylor Greene really is just a walking abortion. $250 worth? Wow. Gotta, you gotta Dude's love got it. got money to waste. Come on. So the tr- country singer Travis Tritt, no one cared, said he would drop Anheuser-Busch from his tour and seemed to blame Bud Light's Mulvaney deal on Europe. Anheuser-Busch sold to Belgian company InBev in 2008. And to be honest, here, here there's a whole thing to get into about the concentration in the beer market, but that's totally not a today problem. Travis Tritt. In full disclosure, I was a t- uh, tour sponsored by Budweiser in the 90s. That was the Anheuser-Busch was America owned, a great American company that later sold out to Europeans and became unrecognizable to American consumers. Such a shame. Cope. Wow. So now the Bud Lash is a whole thing, as is the backlash to, to the Bud Lash. Radio personality Howard Stewart said he's dumbfounded at all the hullabaloo, wondering on air with regards to Kid Rock and Tritt, why do you care so much? Fellow country singer Zach Bryan who politically seems cool, pretty cool, criticized Tritt relatively lightly on Twitter 
I just think insulting transgender people is completely wrong because we live in a country where we can all just be who we want to be. He wrote, Brian also assured Tritt he would drink enough Jack Daniels for the both of us because Tritt appears to have discovered the liquor company partnered with Ray RuPaul's Drag Race a while back. Wow. Did you not know there were queers in most companies? Who do you think does your tech support? Right? If it's backed by Linux, there's someone there in stripy socks. I'm just saying. <laughs> or a fursuit. <laughs> or a fursuit. Or both, really. I mean, let's, right? let's right? be honest. Anheuser-Busch, which is getting a ton of earned media out of this, appears to largely be riding the wave. There was a rumor that it had laid off its entire marketing team, but that rumor is made up. There's also a rumor that Mulvaney's cans were for sale to the public. They are not. Though Bud Light did make limited edition or she, her cans, now popping up on right-wing social media available in Canada for Pride in 2022, which is not a big deal. The company did cancel an event in Missouri later uh, last week, citing safety concerns for its employees because right-leaning people are terrorists. Anheuser-Busch works with hundreds of influencers across our brands as one of many ways to authentically connect with audiences across various demographics. Ooh, marketing speak. Mm Mm-hmm. A spokesperson said in an email statement to Vox, from time to time, we produce unique commemorative cans for fans and for brand influencers like Dylan Mulvaney. This commemorative can was a gift to celebrate a personal milestone and is not for sale to the general public. If you like your Bud Light, you can keep it. And if you're mad at it, you probably won't be for long. Whether or not this current boycott will have much of an impact on Bud Light sales remains to be seen. But the answer is probably no. Boycotts tend to damage a company's reputation more than they do its bottom line. And here, it's not entirely clear how much reputational damage is even being done. Big beer companies such as AB, InBev, and Molson Coors and Constellation brands are constantly looking for new markets to shore up the growth of their existing beer portfolios. And Fante explains, these are tough brands to find growth for. Bud Light has been shedding barrels of volume for years. It's past its prime. It will not be the largest beer in the country much longer, he said. This is standard issue pinkwashing stuff. They're looking for ways to, quote, unquote, align their values with customer segments that they think maybe they can still find some loyalty in. Companies trying to appeal to the queer community is nothing new. Just look at how corporatized Pride Month has become. It's good business to at least appear LGBTQ friendly. Bud Light isn't lost on that. In the wake of this controversy, a March podcast interview with Alisa Einerscheid, Bud Light's vice president of marketing, has started to make the rounds in which she acknowledged some of the brand's troubles. I had a really clear job to do when I took over Bud Light. And it was, this brand is in decline. It's been in decline for a really long time. And if we do not attract young drinkers to come and drink this brand, there will be no future for Bud Light. She said, adding that she wanted to update the company's grassy image. In right-wing media, Those comments are being spun to suggest Bud Light wants to get rid of its more typical white male demographic. Oh, no. (laughs) But that's not really what's going on. Bud Light has been losing ground to other beers, such as craft beers and Modella and Michael, Michael Ob Ultra. Michelob. Michelob, thank you. As well as you can tell we don't drink beer, (laughs) right? (laughs) As well as to spirits for quite some time now. It's looking for new customers wherever it can find them. The reality is much more simple. It's that the white male customer who used to drink a lot of Bud Light doesn't anymore. And Bud Light has no choice but to find people who do. And Fonte said, There's just no growth for Bud Light and its traditional core audience the way it used to have and used to be able to rely on. Some of that traditional core audience, even though it's not growing, feels betrayed by Bud Light's LGBTQ outreach alliance, however small, with a trans woman. They feel like it's gone woke, like another part of the country's culture is changing around them in a way that's uncomfortable. Good. Suffer. Developmentally speaking, by the way, I just want to make this really clear. We've talked about this in the integral videos, but developmentally speaking, that's actually true. The world has shifted to a more uh, like rational, postmodern overall, like sort of like center, you know, center of gravity. And so like these people that live in this like weird sociocentric authoritarian worldview where like a tiny trans girl scares the hell out of them spoiler we are sort of destroying your worldview sorry it's intentional you're talking about a demographic that's drinking that beer here local locally that's about as far as you can get you're talking about some blue collar working men women don't drink that beer a lot or just in general and sure they just kind of stuck a nerve with their base potentially Don, the liquor store owner, said on a consumer level, Don is actually a little bit of a Bud Light's problem. He doesn't drink it and prefers Michelob Ultra instead, though that's also made by Anheuser-Busch. Seriously, concentration in beer industry is a thing. It's worth noting here that uh, Anheuser-Busch InBev 
is hardly some pro-trans hero. The Mulvaney partnership is ultimately about the company trying to generate profits because they're companies and capitalism is cringe. It's also papers over some much less LGBTQ friendly actions. Anheuser-Busch has made multiple donations to anti-trans LGBTQ and anti-trans politicians over time. Popular Info has a whole rundown of companies' activities. In 2021, New York City's famous Stonewall Inn said it wouldn't sell Anheuser-Busch beers during Pride weekend in protest of its contribution to lawmakers who have been supporting anti-LGBTQ legislation. The real villain was ta- capitalism the whole time. That's right. While corporate decisions uh, sometimes serve as flashpoints in American culture wars, it's probably important to point out, by large, they don't have values. Or rather, they have one value, money. So like, yeah, the, yeah. let's find out who you really are. It's capitalism. You guys got to understand something. It's like, again, liberal boycotts don't work. This is the outcome every single time. And again, conservatives are going to bend over backwards to try to, in some stupid way, make this thing stick. And they're going to get bored after 20 minutes like a five year old. So, yeah, we wanted to just cover this briefly because it was really funny. Um, The only real analysis that one can make from this is just that conservatives are, in fact, idiots um, and fascists, but both. But also, like, again, I don't actually have any knowledge of who Dylan Mulvaney is. I don't follow influencers. And so the thing is, is like, I only find out about her because of these people. True. Like, if your if your goal was to not, like, make other people aware of Dylan Mulvaney, you have failed. Failed. With that said. We'll see you in the next one. Mm hmm. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you could like, comment, and subscribe, we'd really appreciate it. Um, if you want to support the channel further, you could go to patreon.com slash xenonpoppy and you could become a patron for as low as $3. Um, if you want to support us further, you could donate below with a super thanks comment, or you could, uh, in fact, even go to our website, which is currently transgrowtherapist.org. Um, you can go there and either donate directly, or you can even get a subscription and get a cool colored name and chat next time we stream. Anyway, thank you again.